Oh, I'm the stroke cardiac and trauma coordinator. This is Jeff Holdeman. Hello. I am the med surge and ICU director. And then this is going to be kind of a fast moving hour. Nasser and Rex are going to come uh, after us and are going to present uh, the pharmacy options. And then Claudia Etock will be coming up to talk about get with the guidelines and how we're doing with our core measures. So I first wanted to share with you a letter. On Sunday morning, we had a patient who came in with a fairly high uh, NIH stroke scale, came in within an hour. He, um, Dr. Frick got on the phone with Dr. Takash. Dr. Takash talked to the family and we gave TPA and the patient says, in speaking with a patient's wife at the bedside today, she mentioned that she found the, stroke, the telestroke experience great, reassuring from the family perspective. Patient is doing well post-TPA. Mechanism was LICA occlusion, but he has good collateral flow across the ACOM and symptomatically improving since admission. Motor strength basically returned to baseline, still global but improving aphasia, mild dysarthria, and right-sided neglect. Best, Jim, and that's Dr. Barcher. He's one of the other neurologists who Dr. Takash had seen him on telestroke, and then Dr. Barcher followed up. And so it's pretty cool that we actually did the whole experience. So one of the first pieces of information that we need is the blood sugar, because if it's really low or really high, we may not go down the stroke. So a patient starts with aphasia or starts with altered mental status, first thing, get a blood sugar and let's see if it's really low or really high. Doesn't matter if they're in the ER, if they're coming by ambulance, they're up on the floor. That's the first thing we need. Swallow screen. I think you, did you put this yeah, one so, uh Yeah, so this is a swallow screen. This is a tool um, that we use on the floor, but there's also a computer generated version of this that's also in the ER for swallow screen. And the, this is something that we developed um, a couple of years ago when we first joined up with Virginia Mason. And the purpose of this is to evaluate their swallowing to make sure they're not at a choking hazard. But the other thing that we have to remember as nurses is that um, we are only allowed at the end of that swallow screen to only do those diets that you see at the bottom. We can't, we can't do a regular diet. So this is just a temporary fix until speech therapy comes and does the actual evaluation. Ours is just a cut and dry. Can they drink? Can they eat mechanical soft? That's pretty much it. Anything beyond that has to have the, um, the evaluation done by speech therapy. So make sure it's done. This is a chartable document, hence the barcode that you can't see on this, but there's a barcode on it, patient label on it, you sign it, you do it, and you can do it more than once. So you do it on admit and they're pitiful and they don't pass at all. If you reevaluate them and situations change, they've improved, you can still modify. You can go back and do another one before speech therapy comes. So don't be afraid to do it more than once if you have the opportunity. And that goes for even giving the aspirin. If the docs want aspirin, we do have rectal aspirin in-house. So if the patient miserably fails this uh, and the doc wants aspirin, we can give it rectally. Stroke scale, I only... Sorry, can we oh, go back? Of course. One other thing. Um, if you haven't had that training on that swallow eval, just come see me or see Ruth Ann, who's the speech therapist. Or, um, or talk to Becky Cortez on ICU because th the three of us are the ones that trained all the staff. So if you haven't had it, just come see us and we can give you training on that, on that swallow screen. And I did the ER staff, yes. so. Um, I only just put a little bit about the stroke scale because some of the most important things, if you're gonna do the stroke scale on paper and then, and not do it in the computer, but if you do it on paper and have it scanned into the chart, please put the time, the date and time you did it. Because if you just, if you don't put that at the top and we scan it in, we have no idea what time you did the stroke scale. And that's especially speaking for the ER folks. We kind of, we really need to know how quickly we did the NIH. So, um, so that's why I did this. And then the rest of it is all there. 
the ER orders, stroke orders, uh, we have also printed them that basically we added telestroke, consider telestroke implementation and then there is also a telestroke order so that we can charge for telestroke. So this is on the non-lytic candidate, so greater than three hours. Um, occasionally, like she said, go more than up to four and a half hours, but pretty much we go down the non-lytic if it's more than three hours. And then the lytic ones. And we have changed, since our training, we've changed the uh, CBC or the uh, hemogram, whatever you want to call it, to make it not have the differential. So we should be able to get platelets back within 10 minutes. That's the, the lab's goal is to get us back the H and H within 10 minutes so that we can have the platelets. And we're working on point of care, INR, and things like that so that we'll have more information. So <coughs> the next ones are yours. Oh, so this is uh, an example of um, the CPOE orders, and um, this is the very first page. It's seven pages long if you print it out. It's lengthy, but um, as it's done in the computer, it's not that time consuming because you just select what you want and the rest of it all disappears. But the thing to remember is that there's two different versions. So um, the, um, the one on the left is the non-admit. So that's if someone's having a stroke that we suspect while they're already admitted onto the unit someplace or they're on med surge someplace. So you, you think that they're having one post-admission. The other one is the one that you, you as the hospitalist would do if you're admitting from the ER and you're doing this, this, this stroke admit to the unit. And um, um, then it talks about TPA and activity and all that stuff in the order set. But um, the one thing to remember is there's two different versions. And I don't know if Linda has the next slide, but there's a slide up that shows, there you go. So it shows the three current um, stroke order sets that are listed in CPOE. So um, you would just go through and pick the one that you find is an appropriate one. Um, the other thing that I pulled off of the order set is um, an important piece from the nursing perspective is one is you need that master care plan um, initiated on all these stroke patients because built into that care plan, which I think you'll see on another slide, is, is um, interventions that you have to do for that stroke patient. So it's built into the care plan. It talks about the finger stick blood sugars. It talks about the vital sign parameters, which you see here, um, which are very important to remember because especially um, th that, first, that first day, you have to be careful with your vital signs. You have to be careful with that blood pressure. And um, regrettably, we've, right after we started this program with Virginia Mason, we had it running for about three months. And we actually had a med error on a patient that had come in for a stroke. And someone, one of the nurses thought the blood pressure was too high and it was a combination of errors, but we gave blood pressure medicine, their blood pressure was 190 systolic, and we gave blood pressure medicine, and their score went from a three to a 10 because we dropped their blood pressure, and it was our fault. We made that med error, and we shouldn't have because the parameters were there, but the doctor ordered outside of the order set, and then the nurse didn't read what the, the parameters were, so we inadvertently caused more harm than good. So this is, um, this is um, the care plans. The top screen shows the three care plans that you can uh, uh, pick from. So you have the ischemic stroke, the hemorrhagic, and the post-IV TPA. So there's three different ones. You pick the one that's the appropriate one. And then the bottom section um, shows you a copy of the intervention list. Um, and the one thing to remember, which Jeanette has highlighted here, is if you need to change um, those parameters, like on the vital signs where it says the R, those little R's are for reference material. If you click on that, it opens up this screen here and you can actually go in and modify things. So like, say the doctor wants to change the vital signs instead of every two hours, he wants it done hourly. You can go in and modify that frequency in the care plan 
so that we'll do it on an hourly basis instead of an every two hour basis. Same thing with the finger stick blood sugars. If he wants it more often than that, it doesn't necessarily be on the stroke, it could be on anything. If it's, all you have to do is right click and you can go in and modify those in the care plan and change the parameter, okay? <clears throat> And we will have uh, copies of the order sets and of your care plans down on the unit so that you can uh, look at them and really kind of get familiar with them. The other thing I wanted to show real quick is we have modified the SBAR handoff report uh, because of nurse practice is working on this project and we are going to pay money to empower to build a report that will look like this so that when you go and you look at the chart you won't have to read the whole chart you'll be able to go to the SBAR report and you'll have everything in it so I just wanted to share that so that eventually our handoffs will get smoother okay it's pharmacy time and we're five